Hello boat fans, this is Tim from Birchard Brighton and this is uh, the next in our little series of what to look for underneath your boat when she comes out of the water. So uh, this is a, a general all round look at the underneath and we'll, we'll follow up with some more detailed ones of various parts of the boat. So yes, as she's out it gives us a good chance to get underneath, get her cleaned off so that we can get back to her paintwork and we can see her GLP and what she looks like underneath. So um, yeah always good to just um, stand to one side of the boat and just follow her and look at the uh, exterior, follow her lines. Are there any dings, are there any scratches, are there any bangs or dents or cracks or anything like that? And if you can get the sun right or the, the daylight right as you look at the boat, it's, it's often very easy to um, spot these things. And already as, as we look here, going forwards um, we can see that there are areas where the fenders have been rolling or banging against the side so they've uh, worn some paint away they've worn some of the the top area of the of the the hull away here so that it's uh, it's more matte and less shiny that's not really a problem generally generally it just means that uh, she needs a good polish um, other things that we've spotted as well we can see that we've got some growth here that should just polish off etc etc all in all not too bad at all um, so let's look at underneath, which is a bit you normally can't see. And again, squat down and have a look and just try and follow the, the shape of the boat to see if we can spot any obvious signs of damage, etc. Uh, I'm not going to do the whole boat on this video, but uh, we'll just have a sample. And uh, yeah, it looks fine to me. Just coming aft, we've got the rudder. So we have a quick look over that to make sure there's no obvious damage nothing against the the leading edge which is the part prone to to catching anything if, if we hit anything underwater make sure the uh, the joint uh, sorry the, the bearing up there looks okay and it does and then just coming aft we've uh, we've got the the drive assembly which consists of the propeller try to look past the dirt on this one because we're not talking about the condition of the propeller in particular but uh, yeah a quick look generally you'll find a propeller looking somewhere between this and this this prop hasn't been cleaned for a long long time but uh, yeah are there any marks on it um, is it uh, corroding is it dented is the nut done up is the the locking pin in there etc etc and also around the back of it um, this is where the rope cutter is so you can see the action of the rope cutter there there may well be a bit of rope on there or something caught round where um, a, a rope has been caught round the propeller and the rope cutter has done its job but there may be a few remnants there so let's make sure there's nothing there. The P brackets, this is here to support the, um, the whole shaft and propeller assembly outside of the boat. Does it look like it might be wobbly? Has it got any damage? Is it corroded? Is it okay? Um, and then the actual shaft itself, so this is the, the propeller shaft that makes the propeller go round. Is it thinning? Is it corroded? Is it pitted? Is anything wrapped around it? Does it look generally okay? And uh, it does, it just needs a clean on this occasion. Then moving forwards, the anode, the sacrificial anode, which is a piece of metal designed to corrode instead of all the other metal on your boat. Um, this should be breaking down because it is sacrificial. So it should be nice, it should feel nice and crumbly here and it should so, show signs of degradation and disappearing but we want we don't want it to completely disappear we want to replace it uh, just before it disappears but it is doing its job which is great so I'll just move along and we'll look at the, the keel so we're just making sure that there are no obvious signs of damage accident cracks dents etc especially along the leading edge which is prone to this sort of thing because it's uh, underneath the water and the deepest part of the boat. We're looking to make sure that this area here, the joint doesn't have anything coming out of it, that the seal looks intact and there's no gap there, which might mean that the keel is loose. And then moving forward, skin fittings such as this. This is probably the, um, the head sink outlet. We're looking to make sure it's in place and it looks firm, um, but it's not corroded and that the metal is nice and shiny or, or uh, anti-fouled and that looks fine to me and again with these fittings down here this is probably the head's outlet and this is probably the head's inlet here so this is a, a strainer here designed to stop things being sucked into the system so if there's any um, anything growing over that or a plastic bag stuck to it or, to it or anything we'd need to clean that off and then finally the actual um, 
the, the paintwork of the boat. So uh, up here we've got this is nice shiny gel coat, or could be shinier, but it is the, the top layer of the actual boat itself. Should be smooth, should be shiny, preferably polished, etc. etc. And then that will have some preservatives applied. So this is the boot topping, which is the joint between the gel coat and the anti-fouling paint. Now the anti-fouling paint um, should not be flaking, it should be nice well applied evenly all over the bottom of the boat bottom of the boat but as you can see in this case um, it does need um, sanding back and it does need reapplying but that's why the boat's after the water um, so that's